Well, this year the old Mercedes GLS prices for this car start from around 1.32 crore rupees and you can of course add a lot of features a lot of other stuff on it accessories and bump up the price as you want now what is all you on this car well in terms of the front end you get uh, the same kind of looks but a completely new grill and now this new grill has uh, horizontal slats on it it looks very muscular very bold you also get a little bit of uh, silver accent towards the lower part of the front bumper the side profile is more or less the same but of course you do get this uh, side step over here which means that you can easily get in and out of this car without any fuss because of course it is a tall and high set SUV at the back it really is very difficult to gauge the changes there are some small changes on the details of the tail lamps and of course minor changes on the bumper unit as well what do you think of this car and what do you think of its looks well I think it looks really very good and the road presence really is absolutely phenomenal anyways now time to step inside the car and take a look at the interiors and tell you how good they really are and then we'll take this car for a spin if you've come to this channel for the first time then please do subscribe to it and if you want to watch this content in hindi then please check out the link in the box below we've got a lot of hindi content on our other channel time strife Well, so now I'm inside the cabin of the GLS and I have to say that this is a phenomenal place to be. Uh, of course, the highlight again is the improved and enhanced Burmese sound system. It really offers you fantastic uh, sound quality. If you're someone who enjoys going for concerts, if you're someone who enjoys uh, going for those, uh, you know, live shows, then this is the sound system you want inside your car because all you need to do is sit here, relax and enjoy the music. Uh, the other thing is that the improvements have been made now to the infotainment system. And of course, you get the Mercedes MBUX app, which really, again, is completely hassle free. And I have to say that Mercedes makes the best infotainment units in the business. Uh, you can control everything. The brightness is good, the menus, some menus, everything is very easy to operate. The seat comfort is, again, phenomenal because you get these bolsters, you get uh, under thigh support, which is very good and support for your low back, again, is excellent. The only bit of downside is that uh, over here, everything is touch so in case you're you know turning around or maybe you're trying to honk and you can accidentally you know press one of these buttons and it can put something on the other on so that is the only thing i prefer to have uh, those regular buttons rather than touch sensitive buttons but i think that people do prefer this uh, nowadays quite as well uh, you get ADAS features of course uh, hill descent assist blind spot assist lane keep uh, warning and a host of other features which we will now show you on the screen and apart from all this, you get one, two, three, four AC vents in the middle and of course two on the sides. So they really do look fantastic in this brushed uh, silver. And of course, you also have this uh, wood finish over here, which again, really feels very opulent, very upmarket and gives you a sense of occasion each time you step inside this car. Two USB type C's over here and of course a big box over here with uh, USB type C, one of them as well. And of course, a button over here to uh, raise and reduce the suspension of this car. A touch panel over here to control uh, the infotainment and of course dynamic settings volume rocker and a host of other buttons to control the various settings that this car has to offer in terms of the quality in terms of the overall ambience in terms of the overall opulent feel the mercedes gls is second to none i'll give it a strong score of 10 out of 10 now let's check out the back seat and then take this car out for a drive Well, so you are now in the back seat of the Mercedes GLS and the reason why we are driving this car and uh, giving you this uh, part of the video is because 90% of you will choose this car simply because of the back seat experience. Yes, uh, most of you who buy luxury cars end up being in the back seat. So that's why I thought, let me also give you this section of the video sitting away in the back seat. Uh, now, in terms of the seat comfort, it is just as good as it would be on an S-Class. It really is phenomenal both in terms of the overall support, both in terms of the underside support as well as overall luxury. You also get loads of headroom, which of course uh, you will not get in the S-Class because it's a tall car, not uh, like a sedan. And knee room also is massive, really massive amounts of space over here. And to pamper the occupants at the back, you get not one or two, but six AC vents. Yes, you get two away in the middle, you get one in the pillars and one away on the roof. So really, it is all about pampering your senses. And if you want to pamper your senses even further, you of course get this fantastic Burmester sound system. 
about which I told in the front, but it really sounds phenomenal and especially the back. If you love listening to music, if you enjoy uh, going to concerts and enjoying you know, live music, then this sound system is the best in the business. You can of course roll up the blinds like this, you can also control the roof from here and you can do a host of other stuff, uh, so it really is all about uh, being in control and in command. Apart from that, you also get a screen over here where you can control the infotainment and you can check where the car is going and control all the apps and you know check uh, the various settings for the seat like you can of course choose uh, the massage function and a host of other things can be done uh, via the seat. So really it is uh, a phenomenal package to say the least and before I forget you also get a tab device over here where again you can do a lot of controls and stuff like that so you can remove these screens and do it via this or of course you can choose uh, the screen itself uh, also while it's charging it's available at the back and it really is a fantastic place to be and last but not the least there's a button over here which can move the seat front or back depending on the kind of space that you want now ride comfort is generally very good Mercedes have done a very good job uh, in terms of the overall ride comfort it's not in the same segment as an S-Class it doesn't have that same uh, cushion air carpet ride because of course it's a heavy and bulky and big SUV so you know you can't really defy the laws of physics but it's not that far behind uh, there's a you know maybe small percentage difference but it's not that far behind the only thing is that uh, some of those badly made potholes and some of those badly passed roads some of them can filter into the cabin so it's not really as uh, smooth and as cushiony as the S-Class if it's total ride comfort and total peace of mind and total luxury that you're after then the S-Class still is the better bet. Anyways, I'll give the back seat a very good score of 9 out of 10. Well, let's really talk about the boot of this car and the best thing is that uh, it's a powered tailgate so all you need to do is press this button and the tailgate lifts up so you don't have to use too much of an effort. Also, because of the air suspension, you can lower uh, the overall uh, luggage carrying area by a little bit it's not too much but you can of course bring it down or take it up depending on your mood and depending on the kind of luggage you have so in case your mother-in-law is coming in you can take it all the way up and tell her it's difficult to load this boot and you can come in another car and in case you have some dear friend coming in you can load it and put all the stuff in it now uh, with all the rows up there's a decent amount of space not the best but it's quite decent you can easily put in two large pieces of suitcase or maybe even a third one if you decide to load it up all the way to the roof. Now you can drop these seats down as well by pressing this button over here and once you press this button, in fact uh, you can also remove uh, these seats or the backrest, you can push them down by pressing this button over here and once you do that uh, the seats go down and even the second row can be you know moved around by pressing these buttons over here. So if you do that these seats go down and it becomes completely flat. You can also make it a completely flat loading area by simply uh, using this button over here and uh, deciding to drop all the seats down and that is something which you'll really appreciate about this car because you get a completely flat loading area once you do that and I'll show that to you by giving you this shot now. Well, as you can see with the last row of seats down, there's a completely flat loading area. In fact, uh, the space is so massive, you can easily shift your house in this car. Yes, I'm not joking. Uh, with all the rows down, you can easily shift your house in this car. So it's phenomenal in terms of practicality, phenomenal in terms of utility, and of course, phenomenal in terms of total luxury. Now, enough of the interiors, enough of the boot. Let's take this car out for a drive and tell you how it is to drive. And as I said, you don't have to use too much of an effort to close this boot as well. Well, so here I am driving the Mercedes GLS now. Now you can choose uh, either diesel or you can also choose the petrol version of this car. Yes, you can choose uh, any one of them. And I have to say that both of them are very good in terms of the refinement levels. Yes, the refinement levels on this car are genuinely very good. So that is something that you will truly enjoy. What you'll also enjoy is the fact that uh, the power delivery is very creamy, especially on this petrol version that we're driving today. Uh, now, uh, in terms of outright power, this is a very powerful engine it uh, makes about 380 PHP from its uh, six cylinder three liter engine and it makes about 500 newton meters of torque which again is very good the diesel of course is a little more uh, powerful in terms of the outright torque figures that it develops it makes about 750 mm of torque but it is quite understandable because diesel engines usually are more torquey so if you want a little more a little better fuel economy if you want uh, to be driving up the hills regularly then the diesel is the one to go for but this one also is quite good at its job uh, as i said power delivery is creamy it goes all the way up to its red line of about 6000 rpm uh, this car uses a nine speed gearbox and the pelt shift is really 
do work very well. Both the up chips and down chips are very quick. So that's all something that most buyers will really enjoy about this car. Milliseconds between, you know, when you actually press the pedal here and when the gears actually do change. So milliseconds between that. So really, any time loss is negligible, really. It's uh, barely milliseconds, as I just said. Ride quality, well, in its own right, the ride quality of this car is generally good. But uh, that said, it's not got the same kind of magic carpet ride that you get on the Mercedes S-Class. So that's something which is missing on this car. If you really want an S-Class kind of ride, if you really want that kind of comfort, then I think yeah, it's better to go for the S-Class. But, uh, you know, because it's a big, heavy, bulky SUV, some of those uh, badly made speed breakers and those rumble strips, some of them can just, you know, uh, crash into the cabin. Some of them, not all of them. It's not really deal breaker. It's not really something which, uh, you know, you can call uh, a big negative, but it's just that the S-Class is slightly better in that department. It's own sister is slightly better in terms of the outright comfort. Now, how is the steering wheel? Well, I have to say that the steering wheel is generally light, but as the speeds build up, there is more weight in it. So it adds up weight as the speeds build up. And uh, a light steering wheel also means that when you're maneuvering this heavy car and this bulky car within city limits, then uh, you're not uh, getting tired and it doesn't become very cumbersome to drive as well because the visibility is excellent all across front visibility side visibility is very good the bonnet line is visible uh, so the visibility is not an issue the steering wheel is nice light so it's an easy car to drive in the city a lot of people complain that you know these big suvs aren't easy to drive but no such issues with the mercedes gls because as i said the controls really are nice and light on this car apart from this what else is there well apart from this uh, you will really appreciate the fact that uh, this car's engine is really creamy even when you rev it up all the way up to about 6000 rpm it doesn't become obtrusive and the cabin also is very well cocooned from the world outside uh, cabin isolation generally is very good and apart from cabin isolation what's also generally very good is the fact that all the noises all the uh, things which are on the outside like other motorists other truckers you know their noises are really subdued and they don't really enter the cabin that's a good thing but also you've got to be careful when you drive this car because sometimes you don't even know when you're doing speeds which are illegal you might think you're doing only about 60 or 70 but actually you're doing about 100 kph so this car also has the ability to mask its speeds uh, so you've got to be careful with your right leg and don't flex it too much always keep an eye out on the speedometer because before you know it uh, you might get a charge at home and you might wonder what happened and it really is not your fault but the fault of this car because it is so well isolated so well cocooned from the world outside it does have a tendency to mask its speed that's something also you've got to be a little careful about overall though i have really enjoyed driving this car and i have to say that uh, i'll give it a very good score of 92 out of 100 in the overall department driving department luxury department as well as comfort and opulence it really does go well on every front now let me stop this car and give you a definitive summary report well, so if you're lucky enough to have this kind of cash line around, then the GLS is perfect for you. It offers you a very opulent uh, interior, it offers you very good driving pleasure, and it offers you the best back experience at this price point. And of course, so that massive road presence is an added advantage. So, if you're in the market for this kind of a luxury car, then definitely uh, keep the GLS on the top of your buying shortlist. I'll give it a strong score of 92 out of 100. It's bye for now, and thanks so much for watching this video.